Welcome to Math Fun Learning. Hello everyone, welcome to this episode of Math Fun Learning. For today's video, I'm going to discuss to you about measures of position for ungrouped data. So we will focus on illustrating measures of position for ungrouped data. So before we will proceed, let's have this a vocabulary unlock. So we have here the following words. First is we have ungrouped data. Second, we have mean, median, and mode. So when we say ungrouped data, this is a set of values that is not organized or classified as a group. So basically, when we say ungrouped data, it is just a list of numbers. So not sorted in categories or even classified. So that's for ungrouped data. So when we say mean, this is defined as the average value of the data. In other words, mean is an average. So, it is the value that is representative of all the values in a data set. And when we say median, this is the middle value of a set of data when all values are arranged in either ascending order or descending order. So, meron tayong e consider when it comes to median. If the frequency of the data is odd, then the middle value is the median of the set of data. But if the frequency is even, then the median of the data is the mean of the two middle values so again to get the mean just simply add the values and divide it by the number of values so in this case if the frequency is even then basically you have we will get two middle values for the median so to get the mean just simply add the two values and then divide it by two so next is we have mode. So when we say mode, this is the value that most frequently appears in a data set. So if you could still remember sa lower years ninyo, meron tayong tinatawag na unimodal, meron tayong tinatawag na bimodal and trimodal. Okay, so that's for mode. Okay, let's begin. So, we have here a preliminary situation. You are the fourth tallest student in a group of 10. What? If you are the fourth tallest student, therefore, six students are shorter than you. It means that 60% of the students are shorter than you. Now, if you are the eighth tallest student in a group of 10, how many percent of students are greater than you? If your answer is 20%, then definitely that's correct. 20% of the students are shorter than you. So this is just one of the application why we need to study measures of position. Okay. So, what is measures of position? Measures of position are techniques that divide a set of data into equal groups. And we have what we call the quartiles, the deciles, and percentiles. Okay, so let's start with the quartiles of ungrouped data. When we say quartiles, these are the score points which divide a distribution into four equal parts. So, from the word quart, so that's four. Okay, so in a 100%, if we're going to divide it into four, it means that the first part is 25%. So, for quartiles, that is what we call the 
Q sub 1 or in other words, that's the first quartile or the lower quartile. Next is, we have the Q sub 2 or the second quartile or this is the median, the middle quartile. So, Q sub 2 is nothing but the median. And for the uh, third is, yes, we have the Q sub 3. So, that's 75% of the distribution and that is also called as the third quartile or the upper quartile. So, this is uh, for the quartiles. Okay, so what is this lower quartile? What is this middle quartile? And what is this upper quartile? When we say lower quartile, to get the lower quartile in general method, this is the middle value that falls between the smallest value of the data set and the median. So it just means that we really have to arrange the data from smallest to largest or in ascending order or increasing order. So to get the lower quartile, you just have to identify the smallest value of the data and then the median of the data. So whatever be the middle value of those, then that's the value of the lower quartile. Next is for middle quartile, again, this is nothing but the median. So this is the middle value between the smallest and the largest value of the data set. For the upper quartile, this is the middle value that falls between the largest value of the data set and the median. So whatever be the middle value between the largest value of the data set and the median, then that will be the value of the upper quartile. And we also have this what we call the interquartile range. So this is the difference between Q sub 3 or the upper quartile and Q sub 1, the first quartile. Okay, so let's consider the set of scores in a mathematics quiz. So we have here 10 scores, 10, 11, 11, 13, 16, 17, 17, 19, 20, 20. So we have 10 scores. And as you can see, uh, our scores is in ascending order already so from smallest to largest okay so for the procedure can you please follow for the procedure arrange the scores in ascending order so please follow everyone and the number two identify the middle value and label it q sub 2 Okay, next is number three, identify the middle value between the smallest value and the Q sub 2, then label it Q sub 1. Okay, follow next for number four. Identify the middle value between the largest value and the q sub 2 then label it q sub 3 okay so for the interquartile range just get the positive difference of q sub 3 and q sub 1 okay did you follow okay so here are the scores and for the lower quartile, what do you think is the answer? If your answer is 11, then that's definitely correct. Okay, how did I get 11 as the value of 
the first quartile. First thing is you have to identify the smallest value of the data set and the median. So it means that I have to identify the median of the data set. So in this case, since we have 10 scores, it means that we have two middle values and that's 16 and 17. So it means that the median is between 16 and 17. So 16 plus 17 divided by 2, that's the value of your median. And to identify the lower quartile or the Q sub 1, the first quartile, you just have to get the, if this is the median, if our median is here, then just simply get the middle value between the median and the lowest or the smallest value. So in this case, our lower quartile or the first quartile is 11. Okay? So for the middle quartile or the median, so as I explained just a while ago, that's 16 plus 17 divided by 2. So if your answer is 16.5, then you got it right. So that's correct. Next is, uh, following the given procedure, the upper quartile now is 19. So, if your answer is 19 for the third quartile, then that's correct. So, to get the upper quartile, you just um, identify the largest and the largest uh, value here in our data set is 20. And then... The number that is between or the middle value between the largest value in the data set and the median is 19. Okay, so that's the value of the upper quartile. Okay, so for the interquartile range, that's the positive difference between the Q sub 2 and Q sub 3, I mean, sorry, and the Q sub 1. So, 19 minus 11 is 8. So, what does this mean? If the middle value, okay, so if the median is 16.5, this means that the scores are centered at 16.5. And half of the data lie within the interquartile range of 8. Okay, so let's proceed with the deciles of ungrouped data. So when we say deciles, these are the 9 score values that divide a distribution into 10 equal parts. So basically, we have D sub 1, and that's the first decile and is equivalent to 10%. Then we have D sub 2, that's 20%, or D second decile. D sub 3, 30%, or that's the third decile. D sub 4, that's the fourth decile. D sub 5, the fifth decile, that's equivalent to 50%. And D sub 6, D sub 7, D sub 8, and D sub 9. So, our median here, obviously, that's D sub 5. So, uh, for quartiles, the equivalent of D sub 5 is Q sub 2, since Q sub 2 is the median of the quartile. So, here, for deciles, the median is D sub 5, or the fifth decile. Okay, moving on to the percentiles of ungrouped data. So, when we say percentiles, these are the score points which divide a distribution into 100 equal parts. So, that's P sub 10, 10%, 10 P sub 20, that's 20%, P sub 30, 
P sub 40, P sub 50, P sub 60 or 60th percentile, P sub 70, P sub 80, and P sub 90. Okay, so in this case, the median is P sub 50. Okay, so P sub 50 is equivalent to what decile? That's D sub 5 and is equivalent to Q sub 2 for the quartiles. Thank you so much for watching. Please watch the second part of the video. Happy math fun learning.